Back in 2022, Splatoon 3 won multiplayer game of the year at the Game Awards. And now I know what you're thinking right now. Splatoon 3, isn't, isn't that a game for children? For the, for the kids who don't know how to play video games just quite yet, this is one of those really nice introduction types of games. Also, isn't Nintendo Netcode like literally the worst? They're notoriously bad for pretty much any sort of servers. Oh God, as I'm saying this out loud, I know this is a joke right now, but like it's actually so bad how much you disconnected like every single Nintendo game. But that does raise the question, how did Splatoon 3 then steal a crown away from some of the other big hitters that year? And to be fair, I kind of was in the exact same boat as you if you kind of think some of those types of things because, you know, you wouldn't expect this to really win game of the year. But then once I bought Splatoon 3 and I kind of dissected some of the reasons why, well, it all started to make a little bit more sense. So let's talk about how this whole thing came to be from all the different angles that kind of contributed to how Splatoon 3 ended up being the multiplayer game of the year in 2022. First things first, what is Splatoon 3? Well, if you're not familiar, basically it is a multiplayer third person shooter developed by Nintendo released in September of 2022, where you put two teams of these inkling kids together and essentially there's a bunch of different competitive modes, but it all surrounds the whole idea. You're using your ink to cover the stage and then whichever team has more ink on the stage by the end, they win. So how does the Game Awards actually decide how they get their game categories as well as how that whole voting process works? Because that is indicative to how Splatoon would be able to win multiplayer game of the year. Basically, what the Game Awards does is they send out ballots to 100 global media and influencer outlets, upon which all of them are supposed to submit their five top games in each of the different categories that they outline throughout the year, and then get all the votes together, Whichever top five games are listed, they got the most number of votes, they end up in the ballot for people to vote on. So once the top five games are put together, the actual voting process is a little bit interesting, where it's 90% decided by those influencer and global media outlets, and then 10% decided upon the popular vote. So while the popular vote can really weigh decisions one way or another, ultimately it is up to the people who are in the industry to make these decisions as to which game should be winning game of the year for all of the different categories. And so in 2022, Splatoon 3 found itself up against the likes of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Overwatch 2, Multiverses, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. And so when you look at a game like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Overwatch 2, both games that have won many awards in the past, you know, why aren't those two really the heavy hitters this year? Well, you can't discuss this without really talking about the Activision Blizzard lawsuit that had happened in June of 2021, which saw a lot of departures from all over the place and honestly the business just kind of shifting in the direction of really just trying to focus on getting money and getting products out the door. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones, phone, right? right? I'm not going to get too much into that whole lawsuit business here because that is a whole thing to dissect on its own, but I highly suggest you look it up if you're not aware of what really happened because it really exposes some of the nasty side of the gaming industry, especially to some of that toxic harassment that was going on and all of the stuff that was kind of being done to kind of cover things up. And quite frankly, I'm very happy that it got brought to light. But the result of this lawsuit, I mean, you can see the effect of it in the Overwatch 2 launch as well as the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I mean, COD's criticisms tends to be the same every single year. Oh, they're just recycling old stuff into it. It's basically the same system. Oh, a bunch of old maps from the previous games. It's stock standard Call of Duty. You can see why that wouldn't be necessarily game of the year material. And then Overwatch 2, tumultuous development period. I mean, I'm a fan of Overwatch and to see Overwatch 2 launch was honestly very, very, very disappointing because they canceled so many of the different game modes going on. Uh, the community itself was just not happy with how that game launched. It was just a really big fumble on how that game actually came out. And so then that leaves Multiverses. Of course, this is a beat em up fighting game, kind of very similarly pulling elements out of Super Smash Brothers Melee, and honestly was pretty good when it actually launched out. I think the big thing that they had done for that one was the fact that there was like team synergy moves. Love of that too, Multiverses brought out a lot of very fun IP from like, you know, the Adventure Time. Ooh, Shaggy versus Batman. Like it was, it was kind of buck wild. I think the big problem with Multiverses was it didn't have that mass wide appeal audience because it didn't have the marketing necessarily to penetrate into that AAA market. I don't really think that there were even that many tournaments or anything about it too. So it was generally speaking a pretty quiet game. And you know, low key Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. 
I could have seen this one with a multiplayer game of the year. It's an arcade beat em up, and I, I played it. This is this is a really fun game. It's a really fun game, but I think it still suffers from some of the similar issues with multiverses, where it just didn't really have that wide market appeal regularly that it, some of these other games would have, like Splatoon, Call of Duty, or Overwatch. And already against these competitors, Splatoon 3 was already kind of standing out. And of course, when you take a look at the 90% of the industry voting on it, Splatoon is an extremely well-built game. And on top of that too, like it's just really, 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 really fun. From the industry perspective, especially if you're taking a look at some of the stuff that was going on with Call of Duty Overwatch 2, kind of makes sense why that wouldn't really necessarily get the vote. Multiverse is sure, but still, I think that niche as well as TMNT those niche arguments might not have really been good. Just quite frankly, Splatoon 3 feels like the safe bet for industry uh, across these five titles. And then if you flip over to that 10%, which is the popular vote, when it comes to just popularity contests between these five games, I would take out Multiverses as well as TMNT, leaving Overwatch, Call of Duty, and Splatoon. Then of course, because of the whole Activision thing, I mean, and the Overwatch community kind of turned it on them as well, that kind of narrows things down to Splatoon and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. But we have to talk about the fact that Splatoon 3 genuinely is a very popular game, which it might be a little bit surprising, but I think that how Nintendo developed it was extremely smart. First of all, this comes post-pandemic, and well, you all remember when everyone went to buy toilet paper and then bought a Nintendo Switch so they could play Animal Crossing? Already, the Nintendo Switch was all over the place. I mean, sales for Nintendo Switch were immaculate, and it was one of the most owned consoles in the entire world. And so especially too, if you think about it from like a kid's perspective, parents, Splatoon 3, even though it is one of those games that is a little bit of a shooter, there's less of an emphasis on actually killing anybody else, unlike a game like Call of Duty. And so that kind of makes it a little bit better for just the overall market in itself. And then on top of that too, I mean, if you've ever played Splatoon, it's just dopamine hit after dopamine hit after dopamine hit. First of all, because there's an emphasis more on the objective-based thing, I mean covering the entire map with your ink as opposed to actually splatting the other players, that's what they call killing the other players by the way, it allows for a lot of people to be able to hop into the game a lot more casually and still have a really good time. Even if you aren't some skilled MLG player, you know, trying to go on the grind, you can still play Splatoon 3 and have a fantastic time with your friends. On top of that too, matches are only three minutes long. You can, you can play so many of them. It, it, it's like the dopamine hit that you get from watching TikToks where because it's so short form, it's just like you get the hit and then you're like, okay, we can chill for a second. And then you're right back into it just to get that next hit. I've played Splatoon 3 and like hours have flown by where I'm like, oh my God, what just happened to me? Honestly, I even made fun of it a little bit when I first bought it. And then I started playing it and I'm like, you got me. Yeah, this is a good game. I'm going to keep on playing. This is fun. And then even too, if you look at the Splatoon series' history... And the game award goes to... Splatoon! <laughs> Splatoon also wins Best Multiplayer. And Splatoon 2 was nominated for multiple game awards back in its release in 2017. So there is still a little bit of this history of Splatoon kind of being this kind of massive franchise that you, I guess a lot of people, myself included, did not expect. And so it's a culmination of its competitors as well as the very solid game that had come out as well as just, you know, the history of Splatoon that these three things just kind of came together which did allow Splatoon 3 to actually win multiplayer game of the year. And actually, I, I just want to say, I genuinely think that this is a really good thing for the community and for the game itself. But upon Splatoon 3's launch, uh, they had a couple of these things called Splatfest, which are kind of like massive things that kind of happened in the game, but it was relatively quiet until the end of 2022. I'm not saying that Nintendo didn't make a roadmap beforehand or anything like that, but it did feel like as soon as Splatoon 3 won multiplayer game of the year, so much more cool Splatoon content came out. I, I can't emphasize how much stuff came out, which really made the game a lot more fun. First of all, now there's a Splatfest almost every single month. I mean, they take, I think, it seems like the third or the fourth in a row they kind of take it off, but that just allows the community to kind of come together and play these things a little bit more often, which is fantastic. They're adding new weapon loadouts all the time, new stuff to play around with, and on top of that too, they're bringing out new maps. Not just taking old maps that existed in Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 1, they are still doing that, but they're also adding in new ones, which shows that there's continued support for this game moving forwards. And of course, there's also the DLC coming out. I mean, this, okay, the Splatoon single player, 
I didn't even bother. I mean, it's just to teach you the mechanics so you can play the multiplayer better. But the DLC seems really interesting, and it feels like they're trying to pull together a lot of the Splatoon content to really make Splatoon 3 the ultimate package, similar to what had happened with like a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or a Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And I'm a really big fan of that, you know? Really maximize the value that you get out of this product. And so honestly, I'm really happy that Splatoon 3 did end up winning multiplayer game of the year. Definitely a shocker for me, like seriously, I couldn't believe that that had happened. But ultimately, I am so glad that it did because it, it is it is honestly a really fun game and I would recommend that you go try it out. Especially too, if you got some friends who are also playing Splatoon 3, it's a fun time. I mean, listen, my, my old roommate even got me this light, which is no, it's not a male phallic object. It's it's one of the inklings when you're when you're in the okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, that about wraps up this video. Let me know if you agree with this whole argument. I mean, it is still an interesting thing. You wouldn't expect Splatoon 3 to win multiplayer game of the year, but the cards just kind of worked out for it. And well, if you have Splatoon, then let me know your favorite loadout because even though I like playing it, I'm so bad at the game. Ranked mode is hard, man. Any comments or anything like that, please leave them down below. Liking really helps, subscribing as well, as I continue to do some of these more editorial, explanatory videos about certain things. I hope you're enjoying this content, and we'll catch you in the next video. See ya, bro.